Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm authorized CCO, CCNA and CCMP trainer. Now we're going to move to section 2.3, addressing schemes. This is part of chapter 2, configuring the network operating system. And it's uh, CCNA semester 1, introduction to networks. Okay. IP addressing of devices. The use of IP addresses, whether IPv4 or IPv6, is a primary means of enabling the device to locate one another and establish end-to-end -end communication on the internet. The structure of an IP address is called dotted decimal notation and is represented with four decimal numbers between 0 to 255. IPv4 addresses are numbers assigned to individual devices connected to a network. They are logical in nature in that they provide information about the location of the device. With the IPv4 address, a subnet mask is also necessary. A subnet mask is a special type of IPv4 address that coupled, coupled together with the IPv4 address determine which particular subnet or larger network the device is a member of. IP addresses can be assigned to both physical ports and virtual interfaces. Now, a subnet mask with an IPv4 what subnet mask explains which part of the IPv4 address is a network and which part of the IPv4 address is a host. Interfaces and ports. Each physical interface has a specification or standard that define it. A cable connecting to the interface must be des designed to match the physical standards of the interface. Types of network media include twisted pair copper cables, fiber optic cables, coaxial cables or wireless. wireless. Some of the differences between various types of the media include distance the media can successfully carry a signal, environment in which the media is to be installed, amount of data and the speed in which it must be transmitted, cost of the media and installation. Configuring a switch virtual interface, Cisco IOS switches have physical ports for devices to connect to but also have one or more switch virtual interface. These are virtual interfaces because there is no physical uh, hardware on the device associated with it. An SVI is created in software. The virtual interface provides a means to remotely manage a switch over a networking network using IPv4. The default switch virtual interface is interface VLAN 1. To access the switch remotely on an IP address, then a subnet mask must be configured on SVI. IP address together with a subnet mask uniquely identifies the device on the net in the network Subnet must determine which part of the larger network is used by an IP address. Okay, so our network was this. Yeah. Now for this PC to be able to communicate with this switch, this switch needs to have an IP address. Now this switch has all the interfaces, our physical interfaces. We can't give an IP address. All these interfaces. If I say show IP interface interface brief, all these interfaces you see are physical interfaces, but this is layer 2 switch and we cannot give an IP address to them, right? But this switch has one logical interface which you can give an IP address. Default is VLAN 1, but we can have a different VLAN, VLAN 99 and so on. So if I go to configure terminal and try one of these interfaces, so maybe go to 24 interface, inter, face, FA024. So I'm accessing this interface here. And trying to give an IP address, IP address, say 10.1.1.1, and subnet mask 255, sorry, 255.255.255.0. Says invalid input detected, invalid input detected at a marker, and the marker is here. We can't give an IP address, but we can give an IP address to a VLAN or virtual interface. So we say interface, interface VLAN one. Give an IP address. So IP address 10.1.1.1. And that's the subnet mask. No shutdown. Okay. There we go. We, we went to the interface, virtual interface VLAN 1. We give an IP address. And we did no shutdown. The interface is up. So if I say show IP interface brief again, all the way to the end. I should see that VLAN 1 has got an IP address now and the layer 2 is up and layer sorry layer 1 is up and layer 2 is up as well right for us to access the switch remotely say that I want to access the switch from this PC right I'm physically connected 
but I want to access it from this PC. So this PC has to have an IP address on the same network, right? So go to desktop, give an IP address, and the network was 10, 10 .1 .1 say 200 here. IP address has to be unique. So one for the switch, 200 for this PC. And the subnet mouse was 255.255.255.0. We don't need the gateway because we know we're traveling in another network. Everything is in the same network. So if I open the command prompt, I should be able to ping that. So ping 10.1.1.1, that was the switch one. The first ping I'm expecting to fail, which is op, is uh, requesting the resolution of IPv4 to MAC address. And you see, the second ping worked, third, fourth worked, every, all the pings now are going to work because it's got that, it's resolved that IP address to MAC address. So now I can telnet. So telnet, um, no, I can't really tell that because I haven't no configured the, the switch at all. So if I go back to the switch and do some configuration, I think this we erase all the configuration. I'll show run. We don't have anything here on the VTYs. So we have to go there. Config T line VTY. These are for remote connection. Password Cisco. Login. Exit. And let's enable the part the secret as well. Enable secret plus. Okay, now we can try and tell that. So I type tell it 10.1.1 all ones. Now it's asking for password. The password is asking for now is a telnet password or the VTY password that we created here. This password here. So the VTY password, which is Cisco. So I'm gonna type Cisco. Now I'm in the user mode on the switch. Now I have to type enable, and this one is class. Now I'm in the privilege mode on the switch, and I can do anything I want. I can configure the switch. But to remotely connect to that switch, we had to create one switch virtual interface, which is VLAN 1 by default, and give an IP address and a subnet mask. We can configure uh, IP addresses on the, the end devices manually or uh, dynamically. We can use a DHCP to dynamically configure IP addresses or we can statically go and configure them. In order for an end device to communicate over the network, it must be configured with the correct IP address and a subnet mask. The default gateway address is the IP address of the router interface used for network traffic to exit the local network. In addition to an IP address and subnet mask, it is also possible to configure the default gateway and DNS server information. The DNS server address is the IP address of the domain name system server, which is used to translate names to an IP address. It is easier for people to remember names over numbers. So DNS, what it's going to do, we give a name, gives us an IP address. So we say, what's Cisco.com? DNS will say, okay, that's an IP address. Number, number, number. For us, we can remember names a lot easier than numbers. Automatic IP address configuration for end devices. IP addresses information can be entered into PC manually, so static configuration, or we can use a DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. DHCP allows the end devices to have an IP address automatically configured for them. DHCP enables automatic IPv4 address configured for every end device in a network with DHCP enabled. And then imagine the amount of time that would be consumed if every time you connect to the network, you had to manually enter the IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway, and DNS. It is possible to display the configuration settings on a Windows PC by using IP config command the command prompt. Now I've got, I had one PC, yep, still have it on. So if I go to configuration, so click start, then control panel, then network and internet, network and sharing, then a local area connection. And in here we select properties. In here we can choose IPv4 or IPv6 configuration that we want to use. Let's see IPv4 first. Go to properties of that. And you see by default is enabled is, uh, enable to get an IP address dynamically. So obtain an IP address automatically from DHCP server, plus obtain the DNS server addresses automatically. But we can configure it statically. You can say, okay, well, this IP address of this PC is 10.1.1.100, and the subnet mask 255.255.255.0, 
and that's it for local communication if you want to go to another network somewhere else we need to have a gateway so imagine now that's our gateway if we want something to be translated in our names to IP addresses we have to have a DNS error so usually the gateway will do the DNS as well but it doesn't necessarily have to be it can be a different server so if I click that I've done it click OK close that and then open the command prompt and type IP config we can see that the configuration that I did early or just now IP address 10.1.1.100 subnet mask and the gateway we can't see the DNS to display the DNS we repeat the command app arrow and forward slash all so that will display a bit more information including the DNS here IP config all I did so if I go a little bit down you can see the DNS server is 10.1.1.5 that's what I configured you can do the configuration. It can be configuration can be dynamically. So properties, I can obtain the IP addresses dynamically, and or we can have. If you can't speak to DHCP, we can configure alternate configuration. By default, it's a PIPA, automatic private IP address, which is 169.254 something something, or we can configure ourselves an IP address. IP address conflicts. The conflicts also may occur if you manually define a static IP address to a network device during a network failure involving a DHCP server. After the network failure resolves and the DHCP server becomes accessible over the network, the conflict arises. To resolve such an IP address conflict, convert the network devices with the static IP address to DHCP client or a DHCP server, exclude the static IP address of the end device from the DHCP scope. I should say scope there. So if you have a two IP addresses the same, there will be a conflict. So IP addresses, they have to be unique. Whether you use a private in a private network, or if they are in public network, they still have to be unique. To test that we have actually configured our network device correctly, we can test the loopback. The, the ping, we can ping the loopback, IP address 127.0.0.1, to test that we have installed the drivers and the network card is working correctly or TCP IP stack. So if I go there and I say uh, ping 127.0.0.1 and that tells me that IPv4 address is 100% correctly configured. Oh, sorry, no, uh, interface card. The TCP IP stack for IPv4 is configured. Uh, I can test uh, ping uh, loopback for IPv6. And I can see the IPv6, the stack is configured correctly as well. Testing the interface assignment, verifying the switch interface. If you examine the switch 1 and switch 2, you use the show IPv, uh, IP interface brief command to verify. We did this before. So if I go to my switch and say uh, it has to be on the privilege mode, so show IP interface brief. So I can see all my configuration. IPv4 configuration for each interface, whether it's logical or physical. If you want to see the IPv6, show IPv6 interface interface brief. Okay, let's see. Let's see what's this one here? No, it doesn't have any IPv6 um, on the switch. Okay, for this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to build a very small network. We're going to continue with our network that we already started. Um, this network here, with um, say, open this one, we did this, right? So what we're going to do is actually we're going to configure it the way it says. Um, see if I can arrange this a little bit, so we can see both. Yeah. So this switch is going to have the VLAN one. Um, nothing on the VLAN one, and switch two. Nothing on VLAN one as well. PC. It's going to have fresh name one nine two one six eight dot one dot ten, and the subnet is going to be two five five two five five two five five two zero. Control A to copy that. That just types. And I'll type the same for PC. 
one. Okay, got eleven. All right. So let me just increase it now. Don't need this anymore. If I go to this PC, command prompt, the IP address I'm going to be using is 192.168.1.10, default subnet mask, no gateway, not DNS, and PC1 as well. So I'll go to PC1, IP config, I'm going to change it to 192.168.1.11. I think it was 11. Yeah, not default gateway. So I'm not accessing any other networks, and they're not DSNS server. So, very basic. We didn't do any configuration. We don't have to do any configuration on the switches for this to be to work, to be able to work. So, if I go to PC0 here, again, and go to command prompt, and I'm going to ping PC1. So, ping 192.168.1.11. And you can see there is a reply there. PC1 is sending me replies. Okay, so if I go to PC1 and do the same, I should have a, I should be able to ping. Uh, um, control T. Okay, connection lost because we changed the IP address. So ping 192.168.1.10 is the second PC. So PC0 is dot 10. So if I go to that switch and change an IP address of that switch, so we can turn that to it. So interface, interface, VLAN 1, IP address 192.168.1. Say 101 for this. No shutdown. I don't need to do no shutdown because we already done it. So, but anyway, if I go to PC1 now. I can just say uh, telnet, I'll try and ping first, so ping 192.168.1.101 I should get a reply. First ARP is down, the rest is reply. Okay, so I can telnet, telnet to 192.168.1.101 Cisco and class. Okay, done. For this as well, we saw the the switch management interface. We give an IP address. We use 101 instead of two. But you saw how we can tell that to the switch. On this chapter, we learned uh, the technician can enter commands to configure or program the device to perform various network functions. Uh, in the Cisco IOS, services are generally accessed using command line interface, which is accessed by either using a console port, a UX port, or through the telnet or SSH. Once connected to the CLI, the network technician can make configuration changes to Cisco IOS devices. Cisco IOS is designed as a mod model operating system, which means the network technician must navigate through various hierarchical models of the IOS. Thank you for watching my video. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Thank you very much. Bye bye.